The observatory, another worthless investment. The city was given a grant to build this waste of space. The money was presented to us from this rich astronomer. He used to teach here locally, but then he became a big shot and left. He gave the money to have it built so that we could gaze at the stars, see the never-ending universe, and wish for the dreams of the future. Dreams are for children. The building is now used to house speakeasy in the basement, and meetings and certain parties in the conference rooms. Perfect example of how twisted things are nowadays. Mind your step, sweetheart. Uh, thanks for the tip. <laughs> this dame is obviously on the tipsy side. A little too much giggle water. And by what name goes my rescuer? <laughs> My name's Detective Stephen Olin. Jane, pleased to meet you, Mr. Olin. Likewise. So, what's a swanky doll like you doing in a gin mill like this? They've got the cheapest hooch in town. She was right. Can't buy me a drink, Detective. I think you've already had one too many drinks tonight, Miss. Jane. Jane? Besides, I'm an officer of the law. I kind of look if I was swigging back a few cold ones with a gal like you. It looked pretty damn good to me. Damn, she was right again. Her contagious laugh was light and sweet. Her eyes shimmered like pearls. And her hair was like that of an angel. My angel. My Julia. Sorry, Jane. I'll have to take a rain check on that. Club meeting. A meeting about what? Who cares? They're all drinkers and boozers and low lives, anyways. Really? I thought only powerful, prestigious, and classy men were allowed in such a club. Powerful? <laughs> yes. Prestigious and classy? Please. I can really find street bums who have more class than Manelli and his friends. <sighs> the things he said to me last night. Let's just say whoever killed the son of a bitch was lucky enough to get to him first. And then, an even classier man is the head honcho, Mr. Henry Holden himself. Henry Holden, huh? Listen, Jane, I'm sorry about earlier. You're a nifty gal, but I got things to attend to. Perhaps I'll see you later. I hope so. All I had was a name, Henry Holden. He was another one of Manelli's high-class buddies. He ran a steel mill company down on 4th Street. I once highly regarded Mr. Holden, but him and Manelli had a knack of getting off cases against them easily. Money talks this day and age. doesn't matter how you make it, just as long as you have it, a lot of it. Then it's smooth sailing for you. It's almost as though you could get away with murder. After talking to Jane, all I had in my mind was Julia. I was clearly in no condition to interrogate Holden, but I needed answers. A man was murdered last night, a man I once clashed with. I made my way to Holden Steel to have a few words with Mr. Holden himself. Thanks for coming on such short notice, Mr. Holden. It's no problem at all. My suite's just upstairs on the top floor. Terrific view of the city from up there. Why that bragging, egotistical son of a... Care for a drink? I shouldn't. Sure. What's your fancy, Mr. Roland? Brandy? Gin? Scotch? No, thanks. Scotch on the rocks, please. Nice choice. He was offering liquor even though we both know the restrictions of prohibition. 
He was offering it to an officer nonetheless. He didn't even flinch. He kept cool and suave. Now that's power. So, we had met with Minelli earlier at the observatory before he was killed, correct? Correct. And what was this meeting about? Well, normally I don't say what occurs at such meetings, not even to my wife or mistresses. But for an officer like yourself, with such an interesting past, I'll tell you. Money. That's all Holden has. I've seen the dame he gets. It has to be the money. Well, Mr. Minelli, myself, and the others met at the observatory early last night, as you said. We were there for Minelli's initiation into our elite club. As you know, Minelli has quite the status in the city. The status that anyone would be envious of. Smuggling liquor, embezzling money, and playing part in the death of innocent lives. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like the type of man I would envy, Mr. Holden. It sounds like the type of man I would despise. I guess then I'd have to assume that everyone involved in your little club is nothing more than a low-life scumbag who gained his power through a series of dastardly crimes. Don't make it seem as if we were all alike. Manelli had far greater power in the underworld than all of us combined. Well, that's power I'd envy. You're nothing more than a greedy, power-hungry socialite. You had possible motives for killing Manelli. True, but so did that blabbermouth of a butler. I never said anything about the butler. <laughs> Please, you didn't have to. We all know about him. That crazy old pathetic excuse for a servant. Sooner or later he'd snap, tell everyone about connections or secrets. It was only a matter of time. I told Minelli to get rid of him long ago, but he was too stubborn. With him out of the picture, aren't you now seen as the new power in town? Nothing gets past you, does it, Detective Olin? Why are you telling me all this? I could easily inform anyone of what you said. True. I should believe you. Don't you remember the last time we crossed paths, Detective Olin? Julia. That was her name, wasn't it? A raging fire erupted in the dark pit of my belly. He did it. I knew he would. He'd bring her name up. I don't know what was holding me back from firing his brains out all over the wall. It could be the fact that I'd lose what's left of my pathetic life, probably to be put in life in prison. Or it could be the fact that Holden's right hand is aiming a revolver three feet away from my left kneecap, anxiously awaiting me to lash out and give him an excuse for killing me. I'm not going to give him that satisfaction. Remember way back when, Olin? What has it been? Five months, has it? Yeah, that's right. How's it been these past five months, knowing that she's dead because of you? It wasn't that hard of a request, was it? All you had to do was stop the investigation against me and Minelli. But no. The crimes you committed were immoral and wrong. And finally, we had indisputable evidence. You and Minelli would have gone to jail and been bidding your final farewells. I remember the day I got the threat. Your letter. You threatened the life of my Julia. All you had to do was stop the investigation. If the case went through, you would have been promoted. Yeah, that's right. So pride and glory were more important to you than your wife's life. I know that you and Manelli paid off the jury. Money talks this day and age. Doesn't matter how you get it. Just as long as you have it. Lots of it. And then it's smooth sailing for you. It's almost as if you could get away with murder. Well, it's late, Detective Olin, and I'm tired. I have a long day ahead of me tomorrow, and I'd like to be well rested for it. You know the way out, don't you?